Hello, the whole series of videos um, I'd like to show you is about the deformation and uh, damage behavior of structural parts. So in this specific video, uh, the focus is on validation tests. So these are typically made at the end of an assessment uh, procedure. So we start um, with a component which is not tested like this and uh, we extract specimens from uh, this uh, component in order to get information of the well, material behavior at specific parts uh, in this component. Uh, the next step is then to simulate uh, the specimen behavior in tension or compression, also shear. This is, these are the main uh, loading modes and uh, this material um, information is then used in the modeling of the whole component. So we uh, set up a model of the component. Uh, well, we use the material um, behavior information that we get from the uh, several parts, and then we simulate the um, well the behavior, the damage and fracture behavior of the part, and to be able to uh, to well see the quality of the prognosis we have, the validation test comes into, uh, into play. And um, this test, or oh, this component has been testing uh, in the machine right uh, behind me. The, uh, this machine is able to apply uh, compression loads uh, up to five mega newtons and, and uh, tensile loads up to eight mega newtons. That is not what we need here. What we need here is the space that is available in the machine. And if we look now here onto this screen, we see the test setup um, with this wheel, um, a view from the side and a view from the top. And uh, at the side, we see a graph. This graph shows force and displacement. Why force and displacement? When well, we like to see uh, while the component is loaded, uh, in which manner the force we have to apply to deform and uh, actually to uh, provoke failure in the component, how this develops. And uh, well, the area underneath this graph actually is uh, equivalent to the energy we, we use. Uh, well, I start the, the video of the test. And if you see here, the red dot moves up the graph. And also you see that with each characteristic move uh, here in this graph uh, related, is a, um, is a specific deformation and at the end of the test where we are right now also uh, separation of um, material. If we look at this uh, we have deformation obviously but also fracture and separation uh, of material. So this uh, to be able to simulate this uh, kind of behavior we use damage uh, mechanics uh, methods uh, which are uh, uh, which are uh, based on the information we get out of this specimen test. Also is a very important is that we not, not only get the global deformation information out of this kind of test but also by looking at it through video uh, the um, well the location of deformation and failure as well as uh, their uh, sequence over time. So this um, has to be well seen in the simulation result as well. So and not all, always like in this test we have fracture at the end of the test obviously here but in some components we have not fracture but little uh, cracks right from the start from the manufacturing status. So what to do with those? We need some other uh, methods to be able to assess this behavior. To be able to assess components with cracks, uh, usually fracture mechanics concepts uh, are applied. So it's often the, the question, um, well, if I detect a crack uh, in my component, am I able to uh, leave it in service. Uh, how often shall I do inspection in order to be able to assure a safe service of the component? 
So uh, for these kind of questions, fracture mechanics methods and analysis, um, they, they uh, give answers. So, and uh, the fracture mechanics um, concept, uh, well, fracture mechanics uh, as, a, as an issue, the main and central issue is to describe the material resistance towards uh, crack growth under uh, uh, an external loading. So that's the, the, the whole thing. And we uh, are able to perform a fracture mechanics analysis uh, if we look at three uh, different parts. The first part is the uh, fracture mechanics material characterization. So how does a, a crack grow into uh, in, a, in, a, in the material, then we need a next step um, to transfer uh, also uh, the, the, the crack um, into a component and uh, this, that's what we call the, the modeling part. So we need uh, the component geometry, we need the material behavior, we need uh, crack um, depth and crack size things like that. And in the end, uh, if we have performed um, a fracture mechanics analysis, which is, by the way, based on the K concept, K uh, for uh, stress intensity, if we have done such a, a calculation, uh, we, uh, we want to compare this, um, validate uh, the result um, by comparing it with a component or component like validation test. So that's the um, whole idea and the whole concept. And I uh, have here a typical specimen uh, which, can, which is used for the fracture mechanics characterization. This uh, specimen has uh, a notch on the side and it's called an SET specimen, single edge notched tension uh, specimen. This specimen here has the speciality that it can be used in tension and compression and both stress regions. So if we look at the specimen, we see uh, polished areas and a notch. This uh, notch has been machined into uh, the specimen and under loading, we load the specimen, uh, we uh, provoke crack initiation and crack growth through the specimen. And if we look carefully, and I'm going to show you later on in more detail, on the surface we see a measure, uh, measurement or measuring grid where we can uh, locate uh, the crack tip. And these kinds of specimens um, are usually loaded in, um, in testing machines such uh, like this. This is a typical setup. We see a um, SET specimen similar to this in the machine. And we see also two video cameras which are looking um, on the surface of the specimen. If we now look onto the screen, uh, we see here two pictures which represent both surfaces uh, of the specimen. And uh, in detail, we see here the, actually the crack and the crack tip here on the one side and the other side. So if we load this specimen cyclically, uh, we can locate the position of the crack tip and relate it uh, to the number of cycles so we get what we call crack velocity. So that is uh, what we see here. If we have the material behavior, the second step would be uh, to do um, a component modeling and the transfer of uh, the situation onto the component level. And so now I've talked about um, the application of uh, fracture mechanics and um, beforehand of uh, damage mechanics uh, and their typical application, but both of them, both uh, methods can also be uh, used combined. And a nice example for that is to be seen here. You see here a volume taken out of the forged component. These are measurements of defect distributions and uh, once they are FE uh, model and loaded, they can also be accessed by damage mechanics using the cyclic plasticity theory. And you see that from the little defects, you see growing damage areas. And these area patches can also grow. And from there on, if it has a, a certain size, uh, you can pick up 
the assessment uh, with fracture mechanics from that point on. That's the idea. So both uh, methods can also be combined.